for her. She is happy to see me, but she seems rushed, like she has somewhere else to be soon. I play her Black Woman by Sonny Chirac and an Ornette Coleman song and tell her they're my favorite songs I've heard since she has passed. Black Woman makes me start crying. A member of the staff tells me there's a lost Sonny Chirac record called Lucy Ma Well De Pla that features a bunch of my favorite jazz players on it. He says he'll have it in stock tomorrow. My mom seems unmoved by the music. She says it is too noisy for her. She begins pushing me around in her shopping cart, which I barely fit into. My mom pushes me around the neighborhood, Capitol Hill in Denver, Colorado. I tell her about my life since she has been dead. The apartment... The apartments I've lived in, my girlfriends, etc. I try to make things sound dramatic to impress her. She, sh she shakes her head sadly, and I say I've always knew I'd have, a ha I'd have a hard life. I've resigned myself to it. She shakes her head again, as if she is ashamed for being gone so long. I realize that I am trying to make her feel guilty. I tell her, I realize I am asking a lot out of life. I don't want to spend my life working in an office or a Taco Bell. Mom nods in agreement but still looks sad. She pushes the cart past Hispanic beggars on the street who are selling old bruised fruit and dirty ball caps out of cardboard boxes on the sidewalk. Mom asks me if I want anything, and I decline. Her offer. My mom turns down a hill and walks past three dead end signs. We come to a cul-de-sac, and my mom curses as if she never noticed the signs and doesn't want to walk back up the hill. We turn down the cul-de-sac and are forced to walk through a candy store at the bottom of the hill. The sidewalk runs through it. It is a tight squeeze, and as we push through it in the car, past the young man behind the counter, I realize that the candy is falling out of my pockets and backpack. I hope that the counter worker doesn't think that I stole it. He doesn't seem to notice. Outside, my mom makes me get out of the cart because she can't push it up the hill with meat in it. Colorful dots of candy gumballs are rolling down the hill at us. The gumballs are large and shaped like their flavor. I suddenly realize that I'm dreaming, and my mom is dead. One should always strive for preparedness. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. It's a big piece of shit. Three-family home. The sun is in a box. Socks, socks, socks. Hey, hey, hey. Red socks, red socks. Fucking socks. Hey, fucking socks. T-bone and tonto. Hey, fucking socks. From la, la, la. What fracking? Hey, bibi, bibi, wubbo. Socks, socks. Hey, hey, hey. I used to be a teenage beauty queen. Gold bar memories of better times. Natty eyes. Now I ain't nothing but a natty nat. Connecticut Social Services, 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 Three Family Home, Old Chitty Factory Church, Three Family Home, Three Family Home, Three Family Home, Three Family Home, Torrington, Connecticut Love, Let's Get a Three Family Home, Let's Get a Three Family Home, Bully, 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 Baloo, 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 Bully, 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 Baloo, 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 Tilly, Wally, Wally, Tilly, Wally, Wally, Tilly, Wally, Wow, 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 We are adults out on the town, drinking and talking, doing our thing, holding our beers, just like so. We are adults, don't you know? Rudy, 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 Rudy. There are very particular limits to things, and how are you? My heart is broken. I suppose, and you suppose. Bali, 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 bali. I know. Lord knows, I know. Go, 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 Poor miserable side. Existential Woe. Andy Quotes by Patrick Porter. Where the competitor ends, the philosopher begins. Oh, there's always another tomorrow, yet there never is. I've written and I am shopping a screenplay. 
called Angela Lansbury in Outer Space. It is a story of two sportscasters who hate each other and a cheerleader who has stolen one of their microphones and harasses them from the sidelines, making snide remarks about their commentary whilst hiding behind a Gatorade jug. When the commentator, who has a microphone, says something about a field goal, the cheerleader says, Oh, good. Oh, good. One, Doctor of Definition. Meanwhile, Angela Lansbury walks around trying to solve a murder mystery. I am shopping the manuscript around Hollywood, but no one is interested. I am homeless and sleeping next to a swimming pool with oh. my guitar. Tori Amos walks by with a man, a Hollywood slicko producer. He asks me what kind of guitar I have. I tell him proudly, a 63 Fender Jaguar. Tori Amos guffaws and sneers at me. She whispers into the Hollywood producer's ear that he shouldn't talk to me because she has heard bad gossip about me from one of my girlfriends. I grab Tori Amos angrily and she turns into a small hairless cat in my hand as I begin to defend my honor to her whilst carrying her in my clutch around a series of swimming pools. By the end of the walk, she is starting to like me. I am back in Denver bar hopping with my current girlfriend. Another girlfriend, a beautiful Hispanic girl with a bob of black hair, begins flirting heavily with me, much to the chagrin of my current girlfriend who is sitting away from me at the other end of the bar, looking sadly at me. The Hispanic girl sits on my lap and coo, smooths her hand on my hair, etc. I am trying to hide behind the crowds of people at the bar. Suddenly, the, the Hispanic girl turns into another one of my ex Girlfriends who smiles sweetly at me and tells me I need to, quote, get out of the city and away from this crazy life, quote, I badger everybody to take me to another bar, my favorite bar in town, quote, unquote, there I am befriended by a young man at the bar who is slapping me on the shoulders and buying me drinks. I find 50 cents in my pocket, put it in the jukebox, and try to dial in a Patsy Klein song, but my new friend, quote, unquote, harasses me about wanting to hear a song called, quote, unquote, Skidoo 1001. Unquote. He pesters me so thoroughly that I get angry and scream out, quote unquote, why don't you tell the whole fucking bar what song you want to hear? The whole bar turns to look as I throw the two quarters into his face. Our, quote unquote, friendship sours and we begin to antagonize each other from across the bar. Then I see that he is wearing my favorite sweater. Quote unquote, where did you get that? I scream, quote unquote, give it back, Arrow. I chase him angrily around the bar brandishing a hammer. We run into the parking lot where he jumps into a car with four of his friends. I reach in and grab the sweater, but his friends swat my hands away. I try to smash the side mirrors with the hammer, but they won't break. So I go to the back of the car and remove the license plates, removing the screws with the hammer's tooth teeth. There are three license plates, New York, Colorado, and Connecticut. I were to remove them all as exhaust pours into my face. As I am kneeling at the bumper, yet another one of my ex-girlfriends, the one I still love, kneels next to me. I speak tenderly to her, but she is aloof with me. She says, you just didn't love me enough, and tells me she has a new boyfriend who is far superior to me. I leap from the bumper and flag the license plates in my enemy's face. He and my, he, 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 oh, 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 blah, 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 and his friends leap from the car and chase me back into the bar. The bar is now my old teenage bedroom. I lock the door and lean against it. It shudders violently as they begin hitting it with their fists. I know eventually they are going to get in. I try to eat the license plates. There is a man with ten faces following me. The parts of his face are monstrously oversized, sweaty, and incoherently positioned. The pores in his skin, especially his nose, are gaping and greasy. He pops his lips at me, and one of his noses begins to bleed. Blood streams down his face, and his lips and tongues bob and lick the blood. He moves laboriously toward me and screams in a low, loud voice, Don't go into the blood room! All right.